Welcome. This is 49F1 and it's the definition of flux. If we look at these diagrams, we can see that what we have is a field of uh, electric field lines. These are the black arrows. And they're going through space and they're parallel with each other, which means it's a uniform field and we have more arrows depending upon a greater field strength. Sometimes I'll only show one arrow and say it's the arrow of a uniform field, but other times I can show a bunch of arrows and say, look, these are parallel, that means it's a uniform field. And the bigger the field, the greater uh, uh, the, if you like, the uh, 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 arrow density. And that's useful, that's a useful measure of field strength. And so I'd like a way of, if you like, counting the number of arrows going through a surface area. And so I picture all these arrows going through space, and then I imagine putting a, a card. And in this case, the card is at 90 degrees to the oncoming arrows. And I say, well, how many arrows would I have going through this card? I say the electric flux, that's if you like the number of arrows, is the product of the electric field magnitude, which is E, and the surface area A. So it's literally, if you double the field, you get twice as many arrows. If you double the area, you get twice as much, many arrows. If you double both of them, you get four times as many arrows. It's a simple measure like that. It's a way of keeping track. Now, supposing I have a situation where the card, for some reason, is not placed at 90 degrees to the arrows. Here we have the card and it's at an angle to the arrows. Some of them, they're all at an angle to the arrows. It's a uniform field again. And so what I really need to look at is the little bit of field, uh, the little bit of the, uh, the number of arrows that go through that little surface, that little, I'm going to draw it from the side. There's my electric field arrow, and then let's do a couple of them. So there's my electric field arrows, and then I have my card, but my card is at an angle. And so when you think about it, you really are interested in the component of the card area that is perpendicular to the electric field arrows. And if this angle here is theta, I could say, well, the length of the component at the side is the length of the uh, uh, original vector cosine the angle between them. Or if you like, if I want to think in terms of areas, I can think of the area component is equal to the original area again cosine the angle between them so I end up with this well the flux is equal to E times this component of area vector which is E times the original area times the cosine of the angle between them now is the interesting thing if I decide to represent the area with an area vector. It's just got the magnitude of the area of the card and it is pointing perpendicular to the plane holding the card. Then I can write this as a so-called scalar product or dot product. Remember that from work in physics one? So the flux is equal to the area vector dot producted with the uh, the field vector dot producted with the area vector or if you like the field vector scalar producted with the area vector now i'm making up an area vector you know all of these lines are kind of imaginary in a way they're all abstractions so this is no big deal so let's play with this a little bit so we can say okay in an electric field 7 newtons per coulomb points in a positive x direction. I'm just going to draw one of them. 7 newtons per coulomb 
points in a positive x direction. What is the electric flux through the surface of a two square meter card if the normal to the surface is inclined at 70 degrees elevation above the x-axis? 70 degrees elevation above the x-axis. Uh, and in the xy plane, so if this is x horizontally, I do my axes x horizontally and y vertically and then z comes out and hits you on the nose okay so this is my area vector and this is my electric field vector and this area of course is two meters squared and that angle there is 70 degrees so what's the flux i'd say my flux is equal to well what was it it was e dotted with a I really make those clear which equals the magnitude of e times the magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle between them which equals it's going to be 7 times 2 times the cosine of 70 and this equals what 4 times 14 cosine 70 make sure in, you're in degrees 14 times cosine 70 and that's going to be 4.788 this is where's my pen sometimes I lose my pen ah there we are 4.788 and it's going to be well newtons per coulomb is e and meters squared is my flux Newtons per coulomb meter squared. Okay. Let's look at this next one. An electric field. Ooh. It's giving me a, a, a kind of um, a, a IJK vector. And I could try to draw this to scale. I could, I could step four, four steps in the positive x direction, two steps in the positive y direction, three steps in the positive k direction, and draw a vector. But you might as well just draw a representative vector. So this is my E. And this is, let's write it down, it's 4i plus 2j plus 3k. And that's going to be newtons per coulomb. And passes through an area vector defined by, oh, let's do an area vector. This is a. And this is 3i plus 4j plus 4j minus 2k minus 2k this is going to be meters squared now I like to represent my area like that even though there's no need for it I represent it like a flat little circle circular bit perpendicular to the area just to fill out my visualization and I want to know the flux if you like the number of field arrows passing through this surface well I know my flux is equal to vector e dotted with vector a and to remind ourselves let's not forget that's the magnitude of e times the magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle between them I'm not going to use that in this question my flux is equal to e and that's going to be 4i plus 2j plus 3k dotted with well this is going to be 3i plus 4j minus 2k and then we do our dot product by let's call it a scalar product we multiply the coefficients together so 4 times 3 is 12 then we add on the next pair 2 times 4 is 8 and then we add on the next pair 3 times minus 2 is minus 6 so that's going to give me 12 plus 8 is 20 minus 6 is plus 14 and it's going to be newtons per coulomb meter squared so in this case I have I have a uh, uh, an answer like that don't forget dot products so-called scalar products give you a scalar answer. 
cross products, so-called vector products, give you a vector answer. Don't get those confused. And there we have it.